Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the Mokana Man at YouTube with another 3D print build video. Today we'll be producing the Choma Ho North Korean main battle tank, which is an interesting mix of various Russian Soviet tanks, mostly T-55 and 62 parts and turret with additional stowage armor and components. This does not exist as a model kit and would not be difficult to kit bash various plastic model kits and scratch build components, even casting and mass producing. I was commissioned to create this for a wargaming army to be sent overseas. Hunting around Thingiverse, I found enough Creative Commons free download models to put together in Mesh Mixer and scale using the scale model calculator into a 70 second size. The missing components were drafted in Fusion 360, even using old fuel barrels that I made in AutoCAD many years ago. It was interesting each of the meshes did differ in quality, though a smaller version didn't matter and used the union tool to mesh it all together into a OBJ file for printing. With borrowed assets, this is an exclusive and original model to my studio. With a vat full of stale resin to be mixed, I utilize the Anycubic Mono X, which has a large build plate to print two tanks at once. Another North Korean design, which we'll explore in the second video. I'm aware through social media and many people taking an interest in 3D printing, more so for profit or a side hustle than just a hobby, how to make money or form a business around it. And it's not so much producing models or ripping models online and selling it on eBay, but what your skills are able to produce in modifying or scaling models to a specific need of a client that if you can draft your own original parts and add to models or your whole model from scratch that's when things become very fun, unique and your skills and printer is in very high demand. I also only take commissions that I enjoy and am fascinated with as it is within my hobby time. With the Anycubic slicing suite I relied on the estimator for material a little too heavily and miscalculated the weight. I find it uses two and a half times more grammage or milliliters of resin to what it spits out. I was a bit uh, light on with the supports and hollowed it, though still made a little bit of money. We'll be more careful in future. The supports were a bit light on and it warped in some of the armor parts that I was going to put side fenders as they were a bit tricky to draft. After a several hour print, all of them came out very successfully at 163 grams. A week plus two bottles to produce 10 models. The pricing was mostly factor on time used in all the effort, labor, digital work, and most importantly, the modeling work. Each model was soaked in two stages of alcohol, first to remove all the raw resin and the second one to clean up further to get all of that detail and fine panels. I know many studios in a quick to turn over will use a curing tank, though I allowed them to sit outside for a little over 24 hours for a gentle cure to prevent splitting and exploding models with a little bit of resin trapped inside. Future models, I have vent holes to drain any resin out of them. And with that, I have a full static model all done, cleaned up with a bit of sandpaper and prepared to be hit with primer. The details I couldn't quite bother drafting in were cut out of styrene and super glued into place. Not all components are fast or ideal to be printed and traditional plating is quicker and better. This is my very first bulk wargaming commission where several of the same models are pre being produced and aimed to do as an affordable job as possible at a very high quality and immediately reached for automotive products as it can be bought in very large bulk. Filler primer is an amazing medium as it adheres to the surface and fills any of the stepping uh, plus imperfections and nub removal errors that I've conducted. It can also be applied very thickly with a toothpick or q-tip to be sanded back and primed for a second time as I've done some traditional 
modeling work on it. A second coat of primer and we're ready to hit it straight with paint. I went to my local automotive store where they match paint for touching up cars or buying full amounts to spray components. Quick side note, the barrel was also warped. It was soaked in hot water and straightened into place. To equip myself, I bought a liter of black and white and got a Mercedes green, which needed a little lightning to become Soviet green and mixed up a bit of tank track and gun metal by changing and playing around with a fine pigmented silver. I loved all of these paints so much I'll be phasing out a lot of my hobby paints in favor of these, especially the quality of the metallics. You can buy as little quality as 250 mil and at a thinning ratio of three and a half to one you can make almost a liter with each. Raw paint color wise they had all the primary secondary tertiary stuff. Metallics went from fine medium and very thick pigment, mica and even pearls. Mixed in the catalog they literally had hundreds of thousands of colors across many cars which you can color match to military colors get them pretty close and either lighten or darken them. I base coated everything in the dark cream which was an immense task and very time consuming. I didn't know how long 10 tanks would take as I normally turn over my small 70 second stuff very quickly. It was almost uh, burnout levels. The second session went with the same color but added with 50% white for a light Soviet color and just shaded around the place for more definition. The tank tracks, the wheels, the guns and stowage were hand painted or touched up with an airbrush and this is where the client wanted me to stop in the base color for the tank a bit of a matte coat to dull it down to suit the rest of the models he had I did retain one for myself and went a little further to match the rest of my tank collection and gave it a sludge wash a little bit of weathering and applied some decals I had sitting around as I've always intended to do some North Korean customs and here I am sitting on just that. Being my first time, I was willing to make mistakes and was far too ambitious and went with a much too large order. Time management was an issue. I did all this during COVID, so time wasn't an issue and I wasn't working. But now that is a slightly different factor and I'm looking at some areas to cut back more on time, keeping the same quality. And I'm thinking aspects such as using filler primer by a rattle can so airbrushes are not clean and dismantled every time. Top coat gloss or artist matting a fixative can use to adjust the finish and finally for base coating as well as getting paints mixed at the automotive store they will make a quarter or half litre rattle can with the exact colour that you need in touch up or panels. They're very expensive at 30 to 40 dollars a can though if this is rolled over and passed on to the client this just cuts your time heavily leading the airbrush only for shading and final work then hand painting now this is something I'll also consider if I'm going for a quick job or not I'm also considering using a larger nozzled airbrush up to a 0.7 such as a single action spray gun to get things done quicker and not worrying about over spray or waste of paint as it's very cheap at this quantity including automotive thinner which is bought in five liters i also learned about or orientation of the model to get less layer marks and not cleaning all the resin off the model or reapplying some at the top where the curves are for a much smoother finish but all the detail was practically spot on and I'm very happy how this uh, turned out and finished as well as the client. Now what killed me in the end uh, these were double boxed individually uh, wrapped using my experience in shipping models before going as far as air flights and traveling halfway across the world to the United States 
the package was very poorly handled and intentionally crushed and destroyed. Most of the models did not survive which devastated the client and myself. A partial refund has been done with arrangements of repair. Future models will be sold in custom gun like cases with foam inserts at a 3mm thickness where they can be thrown around quite a bit and transported by the client for wargaming tournaments or long term storage if they own a lot of models. This will not be repeated in the future but it was still done for the love of it rather than just pure profit. And I definitely love the one model I'm holding on to personally. Thank you very much for watching as always until next time stay tuned for further content and we'll catch you guys next time. Stay tuned for the second half where we do the other main battle tank.